Good evening. My name is Brian Riccio, and I reside at 3610 Mystic Valley Parkway in Medford, uh, having previously resided at 20 Prescott Street in Cambridge. And I am here today to speak on behalf of the collective of artists and musicians seeking to stay from their eviction from their space. I ask as someone who was only allowed as a child of nine in 1970 to take the tea to Harvard Square as my parents felt it was the only place my brother and I would be completely safe, surrounded by artists, musicians, and intellectuals from all over the world who converge on Cambridge as the foremost city in the East Coast for people like, the, to, like those to ply their craft in the company of those like them, supported financially by a community that encouraged those efforts and more importantly, a city government that actively supported their endeavors to keep Cambridge at that forefront. Uh, well, I'm not here to say that the current city government has shown the apathy that other city governments and now the federal government is showing towards the arts. The fact that artists can be given such short notice to find somewhere else in the city they're holding their craft, I feel is a betrayal of the very values that helped to shape the perception of Cambridge that exists to this day. I offer as evidence the fact also that in 1989, when I went to work for the band Aerosmith, their manager wisely chose 215 First Street, the Athenaeum building, as the home of its management team. And then we moved across the street from this very building to 5 Bigelow Street, where on any given day you could find Steven Tyler talking loudly with the city workers who would always stop to chat. It was no coincidence that a band known as the Bad Boys of Boston chose Cambridge as their base at the time of their resurgence. It was also in that spirit of history of great music that has found its start in Cambridge from artists as varied as Joan Baez and Joni Mitchell to the late Mark Sandman. Which brings me to Mr. Di Giovanni. I do not know the man personally, but I cannot but help comment on the hypocrisy of a man who supposedly derives incomes from the efforts of musicians who can make money while attempting to deny the ones the chance who may or may not derive income from their efforts a place to practice and in some cases teach others their craft. No one is denying Mr. Di Giovanni his right to engage in business but I have to ask, how much is enough? Will throwing on us in the street help you get that car you want or help you live longer? I would ask the council to take into consideration that Mr. D. Giovanni controls most of the parts of Harvard Square that are not owned by the university, apparently, and would beg your indulgence to find some way to offer some sort of tax incentive to a man who's profited so much from the reshaping of Cambridge into shaving a little off the top of his pile for some hardworking artists who may never know his wealth. I would also beseech a council well known for its progressive, as progressive servants of the public trust, to not become servants of private industry. And in conclusion, I remind the council of the fact that Cambridge is world renowned as a center for the arts and the humanities. But without art, there is no humanity. Thank you.